Hello, deadheads, and welcome back to my channel, or welcome for the first time, new deadheads. Today, another review from AliExpress. This is the Game Player. I'm beginning to wonder if they don't realize that they're all naming themselves the same things. But this one right here is another, um, I think, $40 to $50 handheld. This does have a 5.1 uh, inch QHD. It says... OLCD, not OLED, really just an LCD, 280 by 720 on the 5.1 inch, so that's pretty nice. More than 20 languages, again, must be the same manufacturer as that big guy we did yesterday. Supports arcade games, TF card, 64, two-person. Uh, this has a USB 3.0 yesterday on the video, 2.0, so 3.0 HDMI, and it can do the 2.4. This is the XY09. So this is an XY09 SKU uh, made in China. Um, packaging is, is not awful, terrible, just, you know, acceptable. Let's open her up and see what comes inside of this. And, of course, another just terrible plastic here. And you get your – it does use uh, USB-C to charge. That's nice. You do get your headphones, again, and your manual. Um, XY09 manual, and here we go in English. So that's nice. Um, Got to give it little hands here. The, the manual is not, not terrible. Uh, actually, kind of decent on the manual here. And so I'd say this is, is uh, better. Uh, if you're looking for, you know, a 5-inch, five 5-inch five or bigger, horizontal handheld this guy right here is going to bring that into you and right off the bat we have the plus and minus here for your volume um, the buttons i like these kind of buttons these dome buttons i like how they light up that's nice i think it looks better than the ones we looked at yesterday um and it's starting up the sega here um and, you know, it just has a nice little feel to it. Um, the software menu is like some of the others we've been looking at. It's just not very good. It's not terrible. Nothing you can do with it. This, again, can do a recorder, settings, your game browser, your dictionary. Don't really know, you know. I mean, this is, I guess, kind of educational, kind of neat. You got a dictionary on here. If you need to know in the quick minute the, the latest idiom, which I, I don't guess it even is in, I guess you could use this to learn Mandarin. That would be kind of nice. Uh, Chinese English dictionary. So music, picture, ebooks. Uh, you can change the theme a little bit, and you got your games here. Um, now, on the uh, the back of here, you do have what's a very difficult to open stand, so you can prop this up. It's a nice little touch, so if you're going to play this with a controller, you can do tabletop, you know. Um, you do have a section of classic games like we've seen before here. Um, Snow Brother, Contra, Double Dragon, uh, kind of preloaded for you. So, um, again, the... Uh, Plastic here, just basic plastic. Um, two um, spots for your audio, although I think it probably only has one speaker. Um, nice, nice aesthetics on the side here. I like the the the, the way it's curved. That feels good. Um, you do have a um, escape button. You have a select and start, and your escape button functions as your menu button. And then you have what is I think a pretty good D-pad, way better than the uh, abominable, um, this big guy, who I think is probably from the same company, since everything looks the same, uh, terrible D-pad. So you got uh, a much, much better D-pad here on the XY09 uh, to do it. And then your stick here, it does click in, nice and clicky, moves pretty good, the software moves good. You got stacked shoulders, although... They're not that great. They're kind of small. Don't really like this style. You have your HDMI. You have your uh, headphone jack, your DCN, which is uh, C. You have your TF card, your power button, and then a USB 3.0. Uh, 
full to put a controller in there. Um, so uh, again, aesthetically, um, nice little design down here. I kind of like that. Uh, feels pretty okay in the hands. It, it, it feels cheap. It's light, but you know, this is not terrible. I wouldn't hate this if someone gave this to me. Um, but let's take a look at some of the games and see how it, how, how it plays. So we'll be right back. We're going to load up some, uh, Nintendo. So we'll start with some basic Nintendo and, and see how that looks. And we'll start with the ever great Super Mario Brothers 3 uh, in widescreen. There is no way to change any of the ratios, the aspect, the menu doesn't give you any of those options. So it's just going to play how it looks. So we'll go ahead and start a game here and see how this thing runs. And so far, pretty good. Um, not bad at all. Um, this is not a terribly hard game to to emulate, but um, plays fine. The stick, the analog stick is a bit loose for it, but it feels a little better down here with the D-pad. This is a, a really good D-pad, and in fact, um, this is pretty good. You cannot change the controls from what I can see, so you're stuck. I don't, I don't like having the run button over here. I'd rather reverse that, but um, yeah, it's playing Nintendo fine. Um, or at least it's playing this game fine, so no idea what kind of uh, emulator it may be using. It's probably S SNES XX, um, but no C in on that. But, but yeah, uh, not playing bad, so let's just uh, load up one more game and see how it does on the, um, the Nintendo here. And it's time for some Street Fighter. You know, you got to test the D-pad. So I'm glad it had this game involved. I will say that the, the ROMs that it does have installed are, are decent. Actually, not bad. Um, so I'll give it credit for that. But let's just see here how this is going to play. This is, you know, Street Fighter on the Nintendo is not your typical Street Fighter experience. But, yeah, it's, it's Street Fighter. We'll play uh, a little bit here, and so, well, you know, you don't even hear the sound effects, but this is, this is less about this machine and more about the, just that this version of Street Fighter is just uh, very low quality because it's 8-bit, so, so, yeah, I'm not doing so well there. So now let's move on. Let's look at something a little more high level. Let's move on to PlayStation 1. We'll be right back. So now we're going to try out some PlayStation 1. I didn't have a lot of luck getting a lot of PlayStation 1 games to play, but this is one of them that I could get to load. It could be the ROMs that came with it. I don't know. I did try to put my own ROMs on it. However, that wasn't very successful. So we'll just boot into here and just show how it does on the little Mortal Kombat. We'll be a little Shiva who, everybody likes Shiva, right? I mean, you know, she's crazy with all her arms. Who doesn't want a woman with a lot of arms? So, again, there is, you know, like most of these other handhelds that are just popping up out of nowhere, there's not a lot with the software you can do here. There's just not um, going to give you the flexibility to really make this look better, change settings. You know, just it's very basic as far. It'll play the game. If you want to play a game, that's what it's going to do. But you can see here that it's it's slow, you know? It's, it's yes, if you want to say it can play PlayStation 1, that, that is a fact. That is not a lie. But the experience here is just not great. And when you can pick something up like the R36S, um, you know, for less or about the same price, it's just hard to recommend something like this. But here, we'll just play a little more footage of of Mortal Kombat Trilogy on the PlayStation 1. Um, and, you know, you can save the game, and that's that's about it. There's nothing else in there. You can at least save it um, to uh, in the menu. But, again, it's just not going to be a great experience. Uh, weird, you have, you know, you have the shoulder buttons that are sort of in a weird place um, to do it. But, yeah, it's... It's technically playing the game, but in the D-pad, I actually don't mind the D-pad. This is way better than the, the unit with the big 7-inch screen. So, 
Um, you can use the stick um, here. Um, Reptile is hiding from me and I don't know where he's at. So um, let's go ahead and let's change games. Let's try another PlayStation game. We'll be right back. And we booted up some Resident Evil 1. And you can hear the, the voice is not right. So it's, again, slow, not playing correctly. There is no way to do any settings to adjust it or anything like that. Um, and technically, again, this is going to play the game. It's just going to sound weird. So listen. Yeah, Jill really sounds like that. That's that's really accurate, right? And remember, part of this game was suspense, and so having terrible sounds is not going to really help. But you can see, and, and this is <laughs> an awfully slow-moving game anyway, so... I guess without the terrible sound aside, it is playable. Um, playing this game anyways is a chore just because of how far 3D games have come in the last 30 years. Um, but you can see it's, it's playing technically, um, playing the PlayStation 1. So I'll give it that, that it can play the games, but that's about it. And it just really is terrible. So let's try another system. Let's see how it does with a more lower end system here. So we'll be right back. And here we are with some Sonic and on the Mega Drive. And again, this is not really running at what feels like full speed. There seems to be a little slowdown, which doesn't really make sense. Um, now, this is off the SD card, and perhaps that affects it. But um, what is the point of having an SD card if it's going to run slow? So we'll try in a second. Um, Mega Drive running off the internal drive just to see if it does any better. But you can see that it's not really, it's, it's, it's playable, passable, but you know, this is an awful experience. So now let's switch and let's try it. Instead of the SD card, let's try running off the internal memory. So we'll be right back. So here is a game running off of the internal memory and it is running a lot better. So, again, I didn't have Sonic, or they didn't have Sonic loaded, so um, this is running more like you would expect it. So, I don't know, it could be an issue with the SD card, uh, or it could be just this chip, or the fact that you really can't do any settings to improve it. Uh, but this is, this is running, you know, much, much more like you would expect it to. Don't really know what this game is, but um, we'll say that it at least is running you know, at an acceptable rate. And again, the D-pad, the D-pad's pretty decent. I gotta say, I like the D-pad here. Um, and the stick is fine. But we'll, we'll stop there and go to our conclusions and um, wrap this up. And so, final thoughts here. The X Y zero nine game player comes in a decent box. It's packaged well. You get the headphones. You get USB C. You get um, very decent buttons with nice coloring and light up. You get a stick that's great, except it's not Hall Effect, so it could have stick drift. You get a D pad that's that's pretty nice. You get a great selection of ROMs, but what you don't get is any ability to tinker or customize. So this is really for somebody that just wants to pick up and play. Um, you get a lot of other stuff like a dictionary, a Chinese dictionary to English. That's kind of neat, you know, a little bonus there. Uh, you get a little kickstand to set it up. You can put in through USB 3.0 a device such as a controller and you can play this tabletop, um, you know, so you get a better control. So all in all, not terrible, not awful, not great. What's really sad is that three years ago before the pandemic, this would have been considered um, really you know a decent handheld at that time there's just so much competition at this time 
And it's really hard to, to recommend when there are other uh, devices, maybe that are not uh, horizontal, but vertical, and are gonna give you a better experience for the same 40 to $50, I would pick up the R36S instead that I reviewed the other day. But thanks guys, remember to hit that notification bell. Please hit that subscribe and like button. And we'll see you next time, Deadheads. Dead Fred out.